Hello and welcome to another video. In this one, we're going to talk about how I killed Pi, a library from PyTest. Uh, and in order to set the stage of this story, I need to give you a little bit of history. Uh, this history includes almost 10, 10, 15, 20 years of history. Uh, but it all came to a head when a sort of fake security CVE kind of pushed the envelope and forced us to do some uh, some damage control. We'll put it that way. Anyway, let's jump into it, and I'll take you along the journey. Okay, so this story actually begins with PyPy. PyPy is a Python interpreter written in Python. It is the original location of the code that you now know as PyTest. Uh, that's where it originally came from. PyPy has been around for an extremely long time. Uh, it's, man, almost a 15, 20-year-old project at this point. Nice. Um, and it is the original home of the library that you now know called PyTest. Uh, it originally started as a library called Py inside of inside of PyPy. You know, Pi Pi Pi. I'm I'm sure that was the whole reason they wanted to be extremely meta because they were already pretty meta. Uh, but Py was a library that had a lot of missing helper things for Python. Things like dealing with uh, path objects or code objects or you know XML parsing a whole bunch of random smattering of utility functions and it was a helpful library to develop PyPy and to test PyPy. The testing part is by far the most popular thing that came out of this. Uh, it was py.test, a submodule of the Py library called test, which eventually became PyTest. So the Py library, uh, people noticed, hey, this thing is really useful. Maybe we could use this outside of PyPy. And so at some point, it got split out of PyPy and became the Py library. Now, it wasn't, I don't think it was originally in, yeah, it definitely wasn't originally in the PyTest dev organization. I believe it was in HPK's uh, user account. But anyway, it got split out of PyPy and was the Py library. So this allowed people to install Py and use it in their libraries, tools, etc., and get all of these nice little goodies that PyPy had written. It also had the test submodules, so you could use the same testing facilities that PyPy used. Uh, and at some point, people realized, you know, the most useful part of Py is the testing part. So why don't we take the testing part and split that out of Py? And so that's where we got PyTest. And PyTest still depended on Py because it used a lot of the internals, um, but it was it was split out from there. Now, I didn't join the PyTest project until about five or six years ago now. And uh, ever since PyTest has been split out of Py, Py has sort of been soft deprecated. And we've been trying to sl slowly remove it over time. Uh, in fact, up until a couple of weeks ago, we had removed every part of the Py library except for the path module. Uh, PyTest was still using the path module to do uh, you know, the tempter fixture, for example, or some a lot of the internal structures of PyTest were using the path uh, pi.path.local objects as well. Although most of them have been factored out to use pathlib instead uh, because you know, we, we don't want to depend on Py anymore. Uh, so we had mostly factored out the Py library, but there was this one last little bit, which was this pi.path library. And then this security vulnerability came up. It was reported on a security mailing list in PyTest, and the maintainers deemed that it wasn't a big deal. This is a regex denial of service vulnerability in svnurl.py in the Py library. Now, if you've worked on any JavaScript project ever, you're probably dealing with a lot of security fatigue from regex denial of service vulnerabilities and constantly getting updates. They tend to be fairly innocuous, like it's really rare that you're gonna be actually vulnerable to a regex denial of service. Uh, and this is a great example of that case. First off, it's in SVN URL. If you're not familiar with SVN, it's kind of the version control system that people used before Git or before Mercurial. I used to run an SVN server back in like 2005, 2006. Um, but I haven't used SVN in years. And I, I figure almost no one has used SVN in years. Now, the way this regex vulnerability worked is there's a little bit of URL parsing inside the pi.path.svnurl module. And 
the attack scenario is the attacker controls an SVN server. You happen to be, oh, dang it. You happen to be using this module to connect to that SVN server. And then this is parsing the output of that SVN server. So uh, an entirely rare combination of things. And only in that case, when the SVN server returns back a malformed result, does this regex you know, use an excessive amount of CPU. That's the result of this vulnerability. And um, the maintainers of, of PyTest and of Py, because we, we both maintain it now, uh, basically were like, hey, here's another related uh, you know, issue about this. We don't really think it's a big deal. No one's using this code doesn't really need any security notification. You can send a pull request and we'll merge it and release it, but no one's using this, doesn't really matter. And then the reporter filed for a CVE. <laughs> and so they received a CVE for this, a CVE 2022-42969, uh, which got the base score of high. If you're not familiar with CVEs, high usually means like drop everything and fix it sort of, sort of problem. Uh, and the reason for this is they claimed it was uh, remote code execution, a remote remote vulnerability somewhere in here. I don't know where it is. But they got a CVE for this. And whenever a CVE is created, GitHub will notice this and notice the associated library, and they will create a, uh, a security release for this. In this case, they created this you know, security release. It's, of course, been updated since then. Um, and anyone who installs the Pi library will then get notified for this. And in turn, this notified about a quarter million people, a quarter or a quarter million projects, so probably even more people than that, all for something that didn't actually, no, no known executing code is actually running this code. So that's, that's kind of why we're like, oh, fine. Finally, we'll, we'll do the extra effort to kill the Pi library. And unfortunately, given how tangled Pi is inside of PyTest, I needed to craft a particularly clever hack to remove the Pi library. Uh, I'm not gonna go over the pull request here, but I'm gonna show you the basic idea behind this hack and why it works particularly well and why people can fall back if they run into errors with it. And it all depends on this one little pi.py file I know, we're getting super meta here again with, with, um, with pi and pi and pi. And this is the, the summary of the hack here. Basically, vendor the two modules that PyTest needs, add a little pi.py file such that um, it'll get imported, and override the sys.modules for pi.error and pi.path, the two modules that PyTest cares about. Now, the reason that this works and the reason uh, well, I gave a comment here as to why it works. The reason this works is due to the precedence of the import system. So uh, you can imagine a scenario where you have installed, uh, where you haven't installed the Pi library, and you're just getting Pi.py from uh, PyTest. Received from PyTest. And so now if you do import Pi, you'll see that you, know, you get from PyTest. Now you can imagine if the Pi library is installed, Pi, the Pi library has a folder called Pi. And let's see, print received from Pi library. And so now if you import Pi, you're going to get the version from the folder rather than from the standalone Python file. And this is particularly nice because neither of the two clobber each other. So they don't provide any of the same files, so they can coexist together. And if you need the deprecated library, you can install it separately and it will override the one that's vendored inside PyTest. This basically means that PyTest doesn't need to depend on Py, but if other things need Py, they can pull it in and PyTest will still hook up the same, uh, the same primitives from the Py library and it'll still work as a drop-in replacement. And so this allowed us to remove the direct dependency on Py, vendor only the stuff that we needed, which is just the the path module and I guess the error module, which uh, has some special errors that path loads or that path throws, and avoid needing to depend on this deprecated library. Uh, now there's actually kind of a cool graph in here, uh, which you can start to see some of the uh, some of the results of this rollout here, which is that the Pi library has significantly dropped in installations, uh, mostly due to PyTest no longer depending on it. 
So I'd say this has been somewhat successful and hopefully this will put the nail in the coffin on the Pi library and we can finally move on and not worry about silly SVN regexes anymore. Anyway, hopefully you found this useful. If there are additional things you'd like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next one.